In this presentation, we will take a look at the recording of a bond at a discount. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. The information will be on the left side. We're gonna enter that into the general journal. We will then post that to a worksheet over here. The worksheet having a beginning trial balance, that's trial balance in order. Assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. Assets in green, liabilities in orange. Uh, equity accounts in light blue and revenue and expense, dark blue. Debits being positive, credits being negative. Debits minus the credits being zero. Net income is currently the credit of sales minus zero expenses, zero debits or 700,000 net income. So what we're gonna have here is the issuance of a bond which will pay interest semi-annually. Uh, number of years will be 15, face amount 240,000, issue price 198,484. The interest rate on the bond, the contract rate, will be 6% and the market rate is 8%. So a few things to note just with the data here. So we have the face amount and the issue price versus the market rate. And also we have the market rate versus the contract rate. Which one of these should we use? What's the relevance of these? Note that different problems, if we're talking about book problems, may uh, line up this data a little bit differently. They may ask it in different ways, although it is related. In other words, the difference in the face amount and the difference uh, in the issue price, the reason there is a difference there, is due to the difference in the market rate and uh, the rate on the bond, the contract rate. However, most problems aren't gonna, are gonna have to lay out the face amount and the issue price on the issuance of the bond because it's more difficult to derive what the difference should be uh, to try to figure out what the difference is. So note that if we're looking at a book problem and we're talking about the recording of a journal entry, they're probably going to give you the face amount and the issue price. And then another in a time value of money problem, which we'll look at later, we talk about, well, if we had these two interest rates, how can we decide what possibly would be the issue price based on this information? So they're related, but in this problem, they're giving us the face amount and the issue price. It's also useful to know what's on the bond versus what's kind of not on the bond, meaning the bond has 240,000 on the face of the bond. That's part of the bond. The bond has a contract rate on the bond of 6%. The bond does not have the issue price. That's whatever we sell it for, just like any, any other thing. If we're gonna sell stocks or bonds, we sell for whatever we can get. <laughs> and so this happens to be what we can get. The market rate is not on the bond. That's again, determining, helping us determine what the issue price is, and it's just whatever the market is, whatever we can sell it for. So if we think about this then, we obviously have a face amount of the bond, 240, meaning we are going to pay back 240 at the end of the bond, 15 years. The issue price is what we're going to receive for it, what we're gonna get for it now. And notice, of course, that the issue price is less than the face amount of the bond, and that we would think is a discount. That's gonna be the result of the discount. We can derive this discount by doing a journal entry with these two numbers. I would go through our same process. First, is cash affected? Our first question all the time. We're gonna say, yeah, we're gonna get money because we're issuing the bond. So we have uh, cash as a debit balance. We need to make it go up. We're gonna do the same thing to it. So I'm gonna right click and copy cash. We'll put that up top in C3, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount of cash we're gonna get is gonna be the uh, issue price, not the face amount of the bond. So this is what we are actually gonna receive for it. And then we're gonna say, well, we're gonna owe something back at the end. It's kind of like a loan, but we owe the bond back. That's a liability, just like if it was a loan, and it's, a, it's a, gonna go up with a credit. So this is a debit balance. 
I mean, this is a credit balance account, like all liabilities, we're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another credit. So I'm gonna right click and copy the bond payable. We'll put that in C4, right click and paste one, two, three. I'm gonna indent that, go into the home tab, alignment, increase indenting. We'll be in the credit side in E4, and we're gonna put the face amount this time that we're gonna pay back. This is what we're actually gonna pay at the maturity of the bond. Then there'll be the difference, and the difference is gonna be a debit here. Notice I didn't make this in order. I'm gonna build this in the way that it makes most sense. If we wanna reorder putting all the debits on top, we can do that later, uh, or just leave it the way it is in order, because that's probably more helpful to understand what happened and how, to, how it happened. So we're gonna have to put the debit here. It's gonna be the 240 minus the 198, 484. I'm gonna use our, our negative sum or our plug formula in D5. Instead of equals, we're gonna say negative, S-U-M. Double click the sum function, and then I'm gonna highlight those cells, those four cells, D3 colon E4. And that gives us the 41, 5, uh, 16. That's gonna be the difference. In this case, that's the discount. So we're gonna take uh, the discount then, discount on the bonds payable, and we're gonna right click and copy. And that's gonna be here in C5, right click and paste one, two, three. So again, notice I put this debit on the bottom as kind of like the plug formula. We could rearrange this and put the debits on the top. Uh, it's not necessary, you know, uh, for the posting of it, but uh, if you wanna make it look nicer with the debits on top, that would be good. However, if it helps to see it this way, then it might be worthwhile to keep it this way, meaning it might be helpful to say, this is what we did first, thought about cash, then we thought about the bonds payable, and then the difference is the plug here, the discount. So when we think about the discount in this terms, obviously the discount just means the difference between the, the cash we're gonna receive and the amount that we're gonna end up paying at the end of the bond term. And it was given to us through giving us the face amount and the issue price. Let's post this out and see what we have. We got cash first, cash up top. We're gonna be in I3 equals we're gonna say this 198 is gonna bring the debit balance up in the debit direction. That's why we're issuing the bond to get the cash. Then we're gonna credit the account, the bonds payable. So here's bonds payable, here's bonds payable. We're in I6 equals, pointing to that 41,516. Uh, I'm sorry, pointing to that 240,000, increasing the zero up by 240, 240 in the credit direction. And then we've got the discount on the bond. Here's the discount on the bond. We're in I7 equals, we're gonna to point to that 41,516 and enter. So if we see what happened here, then the bond went up by 240,000 and we have this discount. In this case, the discount is kind of like a contra uh, account. It's a, it's a contra liability account because what we're saying here is the bond's on the book for 240, that's what we owe. But really, uh, it's, it's got a, a value to us of 198, 484, if we uh, take the carrying value of, of 198, 484, if we subtract out the discount. So we're saying here's what we owe back, here's what the discount is, here's really the carrying value, the sum of the two. So whenever we have an, an account that's kind of like a uh, contra account, it's really because it's linked to this account. It's related to the bonds payable account. Why is this here? I notice it's here because of the difference in interest rates. Although this problem, we didn't have to think about the interest rates to, to get to there. What's really happening is we're saying we're going to pay back 240000 at the end of the bond, but we're not going to expect 240000 today. Why not? Because we think the 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 interest payments are different from the market enough that it's gonna be it's gonna cause that difference. So we're we will accept less money today because the market rate, in other words, is higher than the rate that's stated on our bond, the interest that we will actually pay. So that means that we're gonna have to get rid of this amount, this uh, 41,516, and we'll do that by expensing it to interest. And the reason is not because we're gonna be paying interest on it but because this is really a result of that difference of the interest rates.